Thank you. Before beginning this further pursuit of this evening, I would like to bring my greeting to all of those who have participated here today to this great event, which is the G20 of Religions, and thank all of those who have made possible the celebration of this event, an event that concerns history and the culture of the participating country, but also the search for freedom, for justice, for peace of, for people in a personal and social dimension. When we are confronted with an event such as today's, it seems logical to ask ourselves about its meaning, its value. Through G20, the various participating countries meet on the most important questions for the life of the planet and on common responsibilities for the purpose of look, comparing their points of view to create a better cooperation beyond the great questions being examined, economy, culture, safety, health, to mention just a few. There is behind the G20 a deep awareness that of the existence of a common human dimension and a common destiny for all of those who people the planet and that everyone, everyone has the responsibility to protect and respect. If this is the cornerstone upon which G20 is founded, it seems then reasonable to have a G20 of religions. The religious dimension, in fact, is the place where is manifested beyond differences the awareness of a common human dimension and a common destiny. Religions are a witness in their pluralism the flavor of human existence. In searching for the divine, there is a certain search for meaning, an awareness, a possibility to ask ourselves about our common destiny, an aspiration to overcome a situation that is seen as uh, precarious and problematic, a passionate search for peace and freedom, a real aspiration for the realization of justice, a desire for something new that should fill man and everything as seen in the letter to the Romans, that creation which, as Paul says, the creation that still now is suffering the pains of childbirth. This manifests a desire for a radical, something new, a hope for the future, the hope for all mankind, for a God who, beyond all differences, will dry every tear and make everything new because the things from before are now past. We understand, therefore, why a G20 for religion is useful and perhaps necessary. Useful and necessary because beyond the most different options, including that of not having any religion, the experience of interreligious dialogue intercepts a common aspiration of mankind one for a future and a world that are better, in which justice, freedom, peace, truth can be not only words, but realities. So, okay, so that even with difficulty, they take shape in the experience of people and of populations. Because it's part of mankind and his relationship with other human beings, the dimension, the religious dimension lives in the public space as well, and it may help us to understand, modify, and um, change uh, public policies, because these policies, although lay, aim at the promotion of humankind and human coexistence. But we must not escape the reality that faces us. We know that many consider religions uh, as they have been and are possible elements of division, that they've favored conflict and incomprehension. We're not living in an abstract world outside of history, but in a world that sees suffering, difficulties, abuse, a world that we must face and of which we must carry the weight. 
And yet we know that religions, all religions, um, express themselves in all of the different cultures. And these cultures contain elements of narrowness, of fear, of contradiction and incomprehension. We must not confuse the deep uh, meaning of religion and dialogue in with the ways in which certain historical situations have manifested themselves. The use of conflict and force instead of dialogue, patience and listening has never led to positive results nor to the growth of humankind. When we face the difficulties of our times, we must have clear that, as was said, democracy is defended by healing it, by fighting injustice, by overcoming the challenges and strengthening integration in becoming the drivers on an international level of dialogue as considered the path which, however difficult, is the only one that we need to solve the uh, questions that tie together the communities of the planet. The difficult discipline of dialogue as seen as a constant attempt to find common ground between positions that don't seem, that seem irreconcilable. Also in public and international dimension, we must learn to exercise this on all of this. A lot can tell us can be a lot can be said by interreligious dialogue, allowing us to understand the value of patience, dialogue, comprehension. Interreligious dialogue contains in itself a great value, that of being together. It tells us, among other things, to use an expression of Pope Francis, that death and hatred are not the last words pronounced on the parable of human existence. All of us, believers and non-believers, need to know this profoundly. And this, with humility and with uh, reality, the G20 of religions is trying to uh, work towards. Thank you to those of you who have listened to me. And I would now like to pass the baton to President Power. The time has come for him to speak. Let me again thank you for your action as a statesman and for this presence here gives a, a sense of the sense of what Europe wants to be. Mr. President, please.